Just trying to find some way to connect conservation and the pet hobby, you know, uh, whether no matter what it is, but the people that are out there, you know, fighting with governments or, you know, negotiating with them to try and, you know, preserve these species in their native habitats. Like there's, it, it just seems like we got two huge groups of people that are very passionate about uh, certain in, insects or arthropods or tarantulas or whatever it is that mo the most, most people, the majority of the world could care less about because they're like, oh, they're creepy. I don't like right. roaches. I don't right. like, you know, they, they can all die. I'll be fine. Like, I don't, I don't want to run into them. And that's, know? and it's like, well, they're exactly. a very integral part of our ecosystem. And, you know, it's, so how, how can we get the people that are huge into conservation, the people that are huge into, into the, the pet hobby together and working together towards that common goal instead of kind of being at odds with each other? Like, I think that's that, really what I, I want to figure out. But I, I think that there is, there's definitely a disconnect because one side believes this and one side believes that. But really, I mean, there's, there's valid arguments for both sides, of course. And I think that in a way, it's kind of like getting that middleman, like getting a way to, it, like if you were to finally contact one person that's willing to like work with you on it. And then it's like, you start from there, you know, you, you finally, here you are working together with a conservation company and, or a conservation, uh, you know, effort. And then now you guys are working together. It's proving to be effective. You guys are having viable evidence that things are going well. And then it kind of just branches out from there. I feel like, I mean, that's really the only way it's going to happen is that someone on this team is going to have to be like, yeah, let's do this. And someone on this team is going to be like, yeah, let's do this and work together. That's really the only way to bring it in because there's yeah. no, no one person is not. Everyone is going to agree about something, right? Like some, you know, people are going to be upset that you own tarantulas. There's, there are people out there that are probably really mad that you would own tarantulas. That's or people probably really yeah. mad that I own bugs or whatever. And they would, don't have any understanding as to why, why would you want to keep that? Why? Well, in the same boat, it's like, why do you want to play football? Why do you want to get brain damage? Like I, I'm not a football player, but for a lot of people, that's their life and good for them. Like, you know, like continue to play your sport, continue to do what you love. You know, I love to research animals. I love to have them around me. I, I love to be their a source of art and beauty. And, um, I think that a lot of people put very humanistic impressions on arthropods as well. I keep, obviously I keep tarantulas in a smaller enclosure because they prefer it and to the person that doesn't realize that are going to go why don't you have this big thing for it it's in such a small area i'm like that tarantula wants to stay right there like it doesn't want to go anywhere and that's where it likes to live mm -hmm. and that's a lot of bugs like you know they're they're not this big migratory species like some kind of bird or something like that you know and so a lot of people are going oh i can't believe you would have something in this cage and it's like that insect or that arthropod or arachnid like they don't know any different like they're that that's their home that's their territory and they will defend it and that's where they want to be and they're safe and they know it so it's it's yeah. just i think that it's again it's just comes down to education for that aspect and i think with with what you're talking about with conservation is how they see a lot of pet breeders as a part of the problem well obviously there's a reason they feel that way obviously there is some of the pet hobby that is a problem a lot of the black market is a part of the issue and that is the part of the pet hobby unfortunately uh, selling of animals no you know so there's no going beyond that you know it's going around that and but it's really showing those conservationists being like hey i want you to give me a chance i want you to understand that like i'm actually doing this because i really do want to help and make a difference in any way that i can do that and i'm not out there collecting these things for just for profit i don't even sell these things you know what i mean like and really like being like hey you're kind of uh, uh generalizing all of us, which is a little unfair because it is unfair. Like, you know, it's it, that basically a lot of people are saying, oh, well, all these pet breeders are bad because they're breeding pets. Well, that's not true. You know, it's just like with dogs, you know, there's milk puppy mills, bad pet pet breeders. And there are people that really love their animals and they breed these animals and they take good care of them. And they're, and those are the people you want to go to and you got to find those people, you know, but if you were to just say, 
oh, dog breeders are bad. We shouldn't have dogs. Well, that's absurd. Everyone should have dogs. <laughs> you know? As long as you're taking good care yeah. of them. <laughs> you know? like, as long as you're loving that animal. <laughs> you know, if you're a bad pet owner, yeah. then don't ever have animals. But, you know, that's just it's the same thing with like spiders to me. Like I, I'm someone that keeps bugs and believes in conservation at the same time. So I can understand both aspects. But um, I, I just, I, I think working with conservation efforts and trying to work with conservation efforts, I've learned a lot in the, in the idea of like, they just must deal with a lot of scam, like a lot of scammers because I've gotten a lot of emails in return being like, you know, like dear scammer, like screw you, like, no, like we don't want your help, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, like I, but I guess to that aspect that that was probably the 15th email they got in like however many days from su- the same situation of like, we want to donate like 0.2% or so, or whatever, you know? So I guess maybe they just generalized it and they're just sick of it, you know? And the only, like, like I said, the only way I really got into it was because I knew someone that said, okay, we'll, we'll accept you. Let's do this. And then that branched out from there because then they saw that I was working with them and then a different at, you know, a different organization saw that. And so it kind of branched out. So I'm assuming that the only way to really get, conservations within the pet hobby is to have that mutual understanding is to have someone willing on this side and someone willing on that side. And it's just about finding that person and it may take forever. I mean, it may take a long time, but it's worth giving it a shot in my opinion, because that could be the catalyst right there. That could be the catalyst that like all of a sudden it's like, Oh, we can make this work. We can do this. And then more companies and more organizations and more scientists start opening their minds up to the aspect of people that, collect these animals that want to help that want to make a difference as well. And I'm, I mean, that would be awesome to see, <laughs> you know, like I would love sure. to see that. So. Yeah. And that's part of the reason I started this podcast is so we could have these like long form conversations on topics like this. Right. Um, like there's no way that we could have just discussed everything we just talked about as far as conservation, the pet hobby in a 10 minute YouTube video <laughs> and right. definitely couldn't have done it in a 30 second TikTok or something like that. You're right. Know, you, you, you just can't, really dig deep enough in those so i'm sure that people that are in conservation aren't actually listening to my podcast because it's, it's not that big yet but we're at least we're having that conversation and people in the hobby are going to be hearing it and they're going to be thinking right. about it and what they can do you know and, and make sure they're buying from captive bred specimens and that they're open to you know because I, I feel like it's really on us like the people that are in conservation and that are into researching these species like they they have got the higher ground because they're on the scientific aspect of it Right. You know, I feel like at least for me, it's, it's my responsibility to not just meet them halfway, maybe even go a little bit further, you know, and, right. and try and show them like, we're not all the problem. Like we're not all doing the black market trading and it's, 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 it's difficult, but hopefully the conversations like we have just been having will really kind of help illuminate a lot of people in the hobby and, and maybe make some kind of impression on the scientists. Right. Well, you know, I mean, if you think about it, like there's so much potential within combining those two. I mean, on the conservation aspect, breeding something that's doing horrible in the wild. And the, here's the thing with arachnids. It's not like you're breeding a polar bear. You can't breed a polar bear in captivity and then expect it to go live in the wild just fine. You breed a bug or you breed an insect or an arachnid or, or an arthropod or whatever in captivity you can put those things back into nature. They will just do their thing. They will do their job. You know, they'll just be the exact bug they were. They're not going to know any different. And so that's where there's a big aspect is like, what if conservationists are seeing that there's something dwindling and they were able to come to someone that in the, in the hobby and be like, Hey, here is a, collection of what we collected of these animals can you get viable offspring out of these and we are going to release all of them back into the wild for the next 15 years the Oregon zoo is doing that they have their own lab so they do it themselves but they're they're breeding uh checkered spot butterflies and every year they release the the ones back out into the wild because they were doing really bad in a certain area of washington which i don't want to mention that because i don't want people to catch them <laughs> but sure <laughs> um that's like think about it think about like being a scientist, right? You only get so much funding. If you were able to go to a person that wants to do this for free, that would want, they already do this. They want to take their time to do this. They're willing to help out. And they're like, and and, and you're just like, here, you take this over and you guys raise these things for us. That alleviates an entire job that they're having to do in that field. You know, I mean, that alleviates yeah. something for them. I mean, that's, that's such a benefit. There's so many possibilities of going into that field. And, not to mention there needs to be more education about 
ethic at the ethics of breeding and the ethics of the pet trade because a lot of people don't know that i understand why these researchers and stuff these and conservations nonprofits would be skeptical and maybe jaded i mean there's a lot of scammers out there with the promise of giving you money that really just you know want to use your name i i would understand like if they were a reputable you know nonprofit that they would look at you know especially like a breeder or somebody who's who's making a uh, you know, doing it for profit, like right. uh, they just want to use our name to make more money, you know, and right. not really give us anything. It's and that's just it. Is that's why I actually kind of was like, you know what? I I, I dialed back and I was like, I'm just going to donate the money to these people. Like, I I email them every time. I say, hey, just let you know, I'm releasing this shirt. I'll show them the shirt. You know, I'm going to donate thirty percent to you guys. Just giving you a heads up. And then like, I don't ever hear back. And then I donate the money and they're like, oh, hey, you know, and I'm like, because it was action, not just words, you know, because I'm sure they probably get stuff all the time. That's just like scam after scam after scam. I mean, my gosh, it's disgusting. Just like how horrible that is. And I, I constantly see just like these Facebook ads that are just like, you know, buy a bracelet and we'll plant 15 trees or whatever. And it's like, you know, you're like, are, are you for real? Yeah. Like, and then you look and research and there's like no information about them at all, except for like the rainforest is dying and like, there's no solution or anything like that. And it's like, where are you planting these trees mm-hmm. from? How are you planting these trees? Why aren't you showing that you're planting these trees? You know, it's like, what the hell, <laughs> you know? And so I, yeah. I, I don't know, man, I would encourage you specifically, I, especially if you're wanting to get in the conservation field is to really take an aspect of like contacting these places and being like, look, I am someone that keeps these animals and I definitely check my sources and whatnot. And I would love to pick your brain about like how we can combine the conservation field with the pet hobby to really make a, an ethical and legitimate thing in the pet hobby, because it's kind of a bummer because I would hope that most scientists would be really accepting of that because that would be a great solution to figure out a way to have really to get this, you know, pet hobby under control. We are out. All right. Wow. That went a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My girlfriend kept like popping in and be like, you're still on. I'm like, I, I, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm please apologize for me. No, she's fine.